impact of some of the year, 2018, Rajan Anandan, Vice President of Southeast India and India Google. Congratulations. Have 
the basic infrastructure that we need. Right? If you think about the 900 million Indians live in rural India, uh, most of them don't have access to good health care, to good education. Most of them would like to make a better living. Uh, most of them struggle with things like transport and so on and so forth. And what we're seeing now, what excites me the most, is what the internet is enabling for what I'm calling as the real India, the 900 million Indians that are not connected to the internet. As they come online, they're able to begin to access the kinds of services that, let's say, all of us have. And I'll give you just one example. Uh, there's a startup in Bangalore, it's called SIGTUPLE. I don't know how many of you have heard of SIGTUPLE. SIGTUPLE basically uses AI and machine learning to essentially deliver world-class medical diagnostics as about 100 of the cost that uh, you know, regular medical device companies globally produce. And, and because of connectivity now, they're able to deploy these devices. You know, they're able to deploy them anywhere in the world, but they're able to actually deploy these devices in very small Indian villages. And as a result, let's say somebody living in rural Bihar in a very, very small village or rural Maharashtra is able to get access to world-class diagnostics that quite frankly, in fact, many of us in this room may also struggle with, and it goes back to AI, right? What AI can do in terms of medical diagnostics and the quality of medical, medical diagnostics. Education's been a huge problem, but the reality today is online, you can actually deliver education. I don't know how many of you know this, but Stanford's almost entire curriculum now is available online. So you could theoretically go to Stanford, you could take all of Stanford's classes by just being connected. So as these children in rural India get connected, they get access to world-class education, they can get access to healthcare, uh, they get access to new incomes, etc. The last story I'll leave you with is, we have an initiative called Internet Sapi. It's a partnership that we have with Tata Trust as Google in India, where about three years ago, we launched this initiative to help women in rural India get connected to the internet. Uh, so three years when we launched this, uh, only 10% of uh, internet users uh, in rural India were women. And the digital gender divide in India was you know, worse than what we had seen anywhere in the world, the Middle East, all parts of Africa. Pretty much we had never seen that kind of digital gender divide. And as we tried to understand it, what became very clear is women in rural India really have three constraints, right? They don't have smartphones. Uh, they don't have access to smartphones because either they can't afford them or their families don't want them. Second, they actually didn't understand what the internet could do for them. And third, there were societal pressures where you know, the, the husband may have a smartphone, maybe the son would have a smartphone, but, uh, you, know, uh, the, you, you know, the woman did not. So we said, look, the only way we can really change this is by, by really going village to village. So we partnered with Tata Trust, and we launched this initiative. Essentially, what we've done is we hire women in rural villages, we give them smartphones, we train them on the internet, and then we give them a stipend so that they have this not world class. They want to understand more about healthcare, their own healthcare, the healthcare of their families, and so on and so forth. So, for the first time, I think the internet now is beginning to bring the best of the world to all of India. And I think that makes uh, the internet extremely interesting and extraordinarily relevant for India as we look at the next five or ten years. And I'll give you, mind you, we end with one last story. So now we've actually taken our internet SAMPI initiative to the next phase where we're actually trying to make these women who are SAMPIs into rural entrepreneurs. Um, Mogini is actually in rural Maharashtra. We should have you go and visit, uh, or have her come and visit you, uh, Minister, at some point. Uh, until two years ago, she had never been on the internet. She didn't know what it was. She didn't know how to get on it. She was primarily in a farming household, much like most of rural India, and she had started a very small beekeeping unit. But once through the Internet Sami initiative, she signed up as an Internet Sami, she started learning about the internet. She actually wanted to learn how she can start a business, and she very quickly learned that honey is actually a pretty large industry, and she learned how to scale up her beekeeping unit, so she actually increased her beekeeping unit by 100 times. She uh, started finding out from the internet how to sell to other villagers around her and so on and so forth. And currently, and actually when, I, when, when we met her a couple of weeks ago, she was now trying to figure out how she can sell online. Because here's somebody who was barely making a living, now she actually makes 10 times more than what the family used to make. Uh, this, this year she'll ship about 700 kilograms of all class honey. Those of you who like honey, you should actually try it. And this family, you know, just in two years, 
is in such an incredibly different place. And it's because of what the internet was able to do for her and for her family, right? And what I'd like all of you to think about is,